Hi there, it's Nicola from Forever Young Autobiographies and welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about how to beat memoir writer's block in eight steps. Great that you can join me here on the channel. If you're new, this is the place where we learn to write life stories for family and friends so that unique memories can live on for future generations. It'd be great if you could subscribe and like this video. So beginning this Easter week video, I've got a bit of a story about when I was younger, I would visit my Nana and we would cook in her hot kitchen and she would tell me stories as we went along. Now we would be cooking traditional recipes or we were doing traditional processes in the cooking. We'd be using old, old, I suppose old fashioned, you know, equipment or tools. And she would relate to me about how she used these things or the memories that this process brought back to her. Now a good example of this is she used to have some heart-shaped sponge tins that she would cook birthday cakes in for family members. And she tells the story, she told me the story, how when she was younger her mother cooked all their birthday cakes, but they were sponges and often heart shapes. And then she went on to elaborate about, you know, the different games that would play such as you know, at parties where they, the birthday kid would put on a coat full of pockets um, with lollies in it and then they'd be sent out into the garden and all the other kids would chase them down. So lots of fun. But all of this happened, all these stories and memories were coming up while we were cooking away in her house. And I thought, mm, there's lots of memories in our house and surrounding us every day that we can tap into to overcome our writer's block. So I'm going to go through a few of those with you today. Now there's eight in three different categories, so we'll jump into the first one. Now that is treasures. Now treasure chests, I like to call them, is things that you have in your house, physical things that you would save if it was an emergency situation. So whether that's cyclones, floods, you know, a fire, you'd, you'd be crushed, you'd be heartbroken if these things were destroyed or lost. Now it's Often not valuable things, but sentimental things. Now the first one I'm thinking of is photos and photo albums. So go grab those, have a good look through them. There's also slides, you might not have pulled those out for a very long time. They might be in the garage awaiting cataloging from many years ago. So use this as a good excuse to dive into those. You will find lots of things and people and places and events that you haven't thought about for years. Now these are all great topics to go into your book and to unblock the writer's block, so to speak. So jump into those. That's point number one. Also in your treasure chest, you will have, hopefully have some written documents. Thinking about letters, thinking about uh, newspaper clippings, journals, diaries, those, those broad sort of categories there. Again, they will highlight people, events, key facts that all need to go into your writing or into your book. And the third thing in your treasure chest, if it's anything like mine, is you'll have a few ornaments and a few knickknacks. These, these things all have their own story to tell. So go, go look through those and note anything of importance down. Now also in your house, you've got lots of other ornaments. They've got pictures on the wall. You may have jewelry, old clothing, even things in your kitchen, like my Nana's heart-shaped sponge tins. They all have a story to tell or can help, you know, percolate those memories to the surface so you can write them in your book. So that's sort of the broad category number one. Number two is a little bit different, but it's senses. Now, our memories are really hardwired to senses. It's a great trigger to remembering things. Now, of course, we've got five senses, but today I'd like to talk about like music, hearing. So go into your um, sound lounge or wherever you like to play your music, put that on, whether it's, you know, vinyl, CD, a digital music collection, and go back through the decades, go back through the songs of your generation. And music has a real knack for taking you back to a time and a place where you heard it. It's the back, it's the backing track to your life. So get a notebook and note down any new memories that come that you'd like to include. Awesome one is music, using the sense of music and hearing. 
Another one is smell. Now, this might seem a little bit weird, but go into your pantry, into the fridge and start smelling around. It is amazing different ingredients will you know, spark these memories, whether it's from your childhood or your kids or any recent times. Smell is a great one. Now, we're coming into the last few here, the last few tips, and I like to call this section, I suppose, on the move. So we're still in our house, but we're taking a bit more of a creative approach to sussing out these memories. Now, the first one is probably go outside into your garden. There's lots of smells out there, whether that's herbs or flowers or specific trees and vegetation that's planted that might remind you of different people, different times and places in your life. So definitely look into that. And as a side note, when you're out gardening or you're walking or even doing routine tasks, whether that's even having a shower, the creativity of your subconscious will be, you know, turning away there and things will come, things will come to you. So make sure you're always slightly alert to new memories or new ideas to put into your book. Also um, being on the move is in your own house, you can pick up the phone and call a friend or a family member. Talk to them about memories that you have blanks in that are a bit hazy and they may be able to like fill that out for you. They may also be able to give you their perspective of an event or a situation that happened in the past and give you a different uh, interpretation or really valuable. And of course, they may have memories that you don't, that you didn't remember at all. So it's, it really is a bit of a discovery chatting to friends and family. Now, the last point I've got for you today, tip number eight is again, a little bit different and I would say, yeah, a bit, a bit creative, but grab your library card and head online to your local library. A lot these days will have apps where you can download or listen to other people's books. So you've got um, a catalogue, just search for autobiographies, biographies, memoirs, and, and tap into other people's writing. Um, finding out how other people have approached their life stories is a great way for improving your own writing, but giving you ideas and motivation to do your own. So that is probably the most important tip, is be aware of what other people are doing and learn from them. So in a nutshell, there's how to do a house tour and get memories flowing for your autobiography. So to recap, we had three broad areas was to go look at your treasure chest. Number two was use your senses around your house. And three was get creative. So whether that is, you know, going out in the garden or it's phoning a family friend or three, heading online so you can get access to other people's writings. If you'd like to know all about this and a bit more, head to my website, foreveryoungautobiographies.com. And for watchers here today, I've got some free training for you. I'll leave the link down below. It's how to brainstorm ideas and key memories to include in your writing. And I go through this step by step with you so you then have a basic overview of chapters for your book. It's a really great starting first step. So make sure you check it out. And if you're writing and you've got a wonderful uh, tip to unblock writer's block, make sure you leave it in the comments below so we can all have a read. And if you've enjoyed this video, it'd be great for you to like, like it so others can find it and hit that red subscribe button so you can catch me again next week with some more writing tips. So I'd like to wish everyone a happy Easter with your family. And until next time, thanks for watching and happy writing.